And nobody's bothering you, right? Well... Do you remember watching this live on what was News World at the time, the chaotic scenes from Atlanta in 1996, the bomb attack in Olympic Park? A 44-year-old woman died, 100 more people were injured, and I can well remember, oh my goodness, CBC colleagues broadcasting all night, uh, just bringing us the story as it unfolded. It was a terror attack on American soil. It was incredible. But also incredible was the way the media treated the man who first discovered the pipe bomb on those grounds. Richard Jewell is his name, and his story is the focus of a new film. I do want to help y'all on law enforcement, too. There is a bomb in Centennial Park. You have 30 minutes. The film is called Ritual Jewel, and it's directed by Clint Eastwood. Not a point-by-point -point retelling of what happened in Atlanta, but it falls sort of in the, in the group of based on true events. And there has been controversy about how true the portrayal is. Uh, so much to talk about with this movie. So Eli is here for his Friday visit. And I'm really excited because I remember watching yeah. I remember watching that unfold live as a news event. And I'm very interested to see how it's portrayed on screen. It, it's so interesting just to see the actual footage of the event, yes. having just seen the recreation. Yes. And now I can kind of measure the distance. But as you said, Heather, it all starts with the story of Richard Jewell. And so when we first meet Richard, this is someone whose life ambition is to work in law and order. He makes an impression on a lawyer named Watson, played by Sam Rockwell, early on. And then years later, yes, Jewell is the guy doing the security at this outdoor venue in Atlanta in the midst of the crowd he discovers this suspicious looking backpack kind of a military nature and think about Richard Jewell he was always a by the book kind of guy so he's the one that forced the cops you gotta call it in get the bomb guys and they started to push the crowd back not all the way but far enough back that when that bomb went off there weren't as many deaths but certainly lots of injuries but he was seen as a hero for his actions for a few days and then the story changed as the FBI came under pressure to find the bomber to explain how they missed this happening in the first place and come up with a radical theory to take a look at more from the trailer. Richard, you're a national hero now. Thank you, sir. But I was just doing my job. You always look at the guy who found the bomb just like you always look at the guy who found the body. Jewel fits the profile of the lone bomber. A frustrated white man who is a police wannabe who seeks to become a hero. We're running it. We're running it. And so Jewel mm. is caught in the pincers of this reporter who looking to break the biggest story in the history of her city and this agency looking to cover up for the fact that they missed what was occurring in the first place. What is, I, I mean, I alluded to this, there has been a lot of controversy building ahead of the release today. What is that about? It really is about the reporter character played by Kathy, uh, it's Kathy Scruggs as played by Olivia Wilde, who herself is also a director. She directed uh, Booksmart earlier this year. Now, she plays Scruggs as this kind of rabble-rousing reporter, the kind of reporter that all the guys want to sleep with and all the women can't stand in the newsroom, but she's hungry for, for news, hungry for scoops. She works her sources, and in the film, well, it implies that she offered sex for a tip from an agent played by John Hamm. Now, here's the thing. Scruggs passed away in 2001, but now the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, her employer, is threatening to sue Ooh. the studio executives, Clint Eastwood, the screenwriter. They're asking for a uh, disclaimer to be put in front of the film. And on top of that, just yesterday, imagine this, the movie just about to open, mm -hmm. and Olivia Wilde herself has tweeted explaining how she sees the character and her interpretation of the way it's portrayed. And so she tweeted talking about her background, saying, as a child of journalists myself, I have deep respect for the essential work of all in their field, particularly today when the media is routinely attacked and discredited and regional papers like the Atlanta Journal-Constitution are disappearing on a daily basis. But she also went on to give this explanation. The perspective of the fictional dramatization of the story 
as I understood it, was that Kathy and the FBI agent who leaked false information to her were in a pre-existing romantic relationship, not a transactional exchange of sex for information. Hmm. I would say that is a very generous interpretation. So, as you have seen it then, what's your sense? What's your take on uh, the way she portrayed it, the way the film has portrayed this character? It does seem transactional. It does seem to use the current political parlance a quid pro quo in that <laughs> she goes to this agent played by John Hamm and there is kind of an offer on the table. He gives the tip and then she says to him, okay, where do you want to do this? In the car, in a hotel room. So that seems mm. to be transactional. And more than that, she is portrayed as the villain. Like she is portrayed as the woman responsible for putting this man in the middle of this media hurricane. It is not a sympathetic portrayal and that seems to be in line with Clint Eastwood who as a filmmaker as he's gotten older his opinions I would say have calcified and it is no coincidence that he is making a movie about a misunderstood hero who was railroaded by an out-of-control government agency and the so-called fake news media but the tragedy is that in the middle of all of this is a remarkable performance by Paul Walter Hauser and there's only so many people that could play this character and play it with so much empathy he gives you the idea of someone who is such a believer in law and order, even as the FBI agents are investigating him, he's almost opening the door for them. He's trying to help them up. He can't help himself, even though he is now the source of their investigation. So a wonderful performance, but because of the irresponsible way they portray the reporter, that kind of calls into doubt everything I've seen in this film, even though it's based on a true story. So I have to wonder what other artistic license is in this film, and that is why it gets three stars out of five. Sounds like missed opportunity there, Eli. Thank yeah. you very much. You're welcome.